This video is about Rule 65 and this is your certiorari, prohibition, and mandamus. For Rule 65, this is our outline. We start with the definitions and distinctions requisites. When is your petition for certiorari, prohibition, and mandamus proper? Injunctive relief. You will be, we will be distinguishing Rule 65 from Rule 45. Your Rule 45 is your appeal by certiorari or your petition for review on certiorari and from judicial power. Your judicial power, that is your Article 8, sec Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution. We will also be distinguishing prohibition from mandamus and from injunction. Next is we are going to study when are we going to file the petition and where, what are the exceptions to the filing of motion for reconsideration before filing petition, what are the reliefs petitioner is entitled to, the acts or omissions of first level, that is your MTC and RTC in election cases, and last is the effect of filing an unmeritorious petition. So again, this is in accordance with the syllabus issued by the Supreme Court, so please be guided accordingly. So we begin with definitions and distinctions, but distinctions muna tayo para mas madali ninyong ma-picture out, mas madali sa inyong i-recall. So for your certiorari, it is directed against whom? It is directed against any tribunal, board, or officer. When we talk about prohibition, nadagdagan yan. So aside from tribunal, board, or officer, you include corporation or person. This is also true when we talk about mandamus. It is directed against any tribunal, corporation, board, officer, or person. That tribunal, board, or officer in certiorari must be exercising judicial or quasi-judicial functions. For prohibition, the respondent must be exercising judicial quasi-judicial or ministerial functions, and for mandamus, the respondent must be exercising ministerial functions. How about the purpose? What is your purpose or what is your prayer if you are going to file a petition for, cer for certiorari? Your prayer is you want to annul or modify the proceedings of the tribunal, board, or officer. In prohibition, your prayer or your purpose is you want to command the respondent to desist from further proceedings in the actions or matters. In mandamus, you have two. There are two. You want first is you want to command the respondent to do the act required to be done to protect the rights of the petitioner and you want to pay the damages sustained by the petitioner by reason of the wrongful acts of the respondent. So please take note of that. How about the grounds? For certiorari, there are three grounds. Tatlo yan ha, akala ng mga tao, iisa lang yan, but that is actually tatlo. First is the respondent acted without jurisdiction. Number two, the respondent acted in excess of his jurisdiction. Number three is the respondent acted with grave abuse of discretion. This is also the same ground when we talk about prohibition. How about in mandamus? Same din ba ang grounds? Answer, no. Your ground in mandamus is the respondent here is unlawfully, allegedly, ha? he is unlawfully neglecting the performance of a ministerial duty. Or another ground is, the respondent is excluding another person from the use and enjoyment of a right or office to which such other person is entitled. And last is what I call the common denominator. There is no appeal or any plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. So this is how we will distinguish, or this is how you distinguish certiorari, prohibition, and mandamus. So if you will be asked to explain the concept of certiorari, prohibition, or mandamus, madali nang sagutin. Just remember the purpose or the prayer, the grounds, the common denominator, who, it, it, who is your respondent or who is it directed to and the functions of the respondent. So again, or this is again taken from section 1, section 2, and section 3 of rule 65. 
Next is requisites. So for certiorari, what are the requisites? Number one is the writ is directed against a tribunal, board, or officer exercising judicial or quasi-judicial functions. And the tribunal, board, or officer has acted without jurisdiction or in excess of its jurisdiction or with grave abuse of discretion. Again, tatlo yan, hindi yan isa lang. And last is our common denominator, which is there is no appeal or any plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. So, pag... Pag binasa mo yung requisites, more or less parehas lang dun sa mga nabanggit natin kanina, yung de definitions and distinctions. How about in prohibition? What are the requisites? Same. Again, number one, who is your respondent? The respondent there is a tribunal, corporation, board, or person, and that respondent is exercising either judicial, quasi-judicial, or ministerial functions. Number two is the ground. Number three is the common denominator. How about for your mandamos? You take care of mandamos, ha? You take note of mandamos kasi tinatanong yan palagi sa bar exams. Favorite topic yan. So first is the plaintiff must have a clear legal right to the act demanded. The plaintiff must have a clear legal right to the act demanded. Number two is it is the duty of the defendant to perform the act because it is mandated by law. The act to be performed is ministerial. Number four is the defendant is unlawfully neglecting the performance of a ministerial duty or the defendant is unlawfully excluding another person from the use and enjoyment of a right or office to which such other person is entitled. You take note of letter B, that is yung excluding another person, kasi pag binasa mo siya, more or less para siyang kowaranto, but that is a different. And last is our common denominator, which is again, there is no appeal or other plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. So these are the requisites. For application, let's let's read 2011 number 73 bar question MCQ. So which of the following is not required in a petition for mandamus? Choices are letter A, the act to be performed is not discretionary. Letter B, there is no other adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. Letter C is that the respondent neglects to perform a clear duty under a contract. And last choice is letter D, the petitioner has a clear legal right to the act demanded. So, balikan natin ano ulit ang mga requisites ng mandamus. So, sino ang hindi dapat makasama? The answer here is letter C, the respondent neglects to perform a clear duty under a contract. Another bar question, in 1996, Congress passed Republic Act Number no. 8189. Ano ba yung RA Number no. 8189? That is the computerization of elections. So pursuant thereto, the COMELEC approved the VRIS project or your Voters Registration and Identification System project. So it issued invitations to pre-qualify and bid for the project. After the public bidding, Futukina was declared the winning bidder. The bid of Futukina is 6 billion pesos. But Comelec Chairman Go, he objected to the award on the ground that the budget for the Comelec's modernization is only 1 billion pesos, 1 billion pesos at hindi 6 billion. So what he did is he announced to the public that the VRIS project has been set aside. Two commissioners, they sided with Chairman Go. The rest, they voted to uphold the contract. Meanwhile, Fotokina filed with the RTC a petition for mandamus. What is his purpose? Because he wants to compel the COMELEC to implement the contract. The Office of the Solgen, representing Chairman Go, they opposed the petition on the ground that Mandamus does not lie to enforce contractual obligations. So question, is your petition for mandamus, is that an appropriate remedy to enforce contractual obligations? Answer of the UP Law Center is no. The petition for mandamus is not an appropriate remedy because it is not available to enforce a contractual obligations. Mandamus again is directed only to ministerial acts 
directing or commanding a person to do a legal duty. So this is an actual case. This is the case of Comelec versus Quijano Padilla. So again, ano ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dyan sa case ng Comelec versus Quijano Padilla? Nireiterate ni ng Supreme Court that for the enforcement of the performance of contractual obligations, again, mandamus is not the proper remedy. Mandamus does not lie to enforce the performance of contractual obligations. Because if you are going to enforce your contract rights of a private and personal nature, or if you are going to enforce the obligations which rest wholly upon contract, the writ of mandamus has never been considered as an appropriate remedy. Bakit? Bakit ganyan? Because according to the Supreme Court, you, a grieved party, you have other remedies. Ano ba yung other remedies mo? You can file an ordinary civil action for breach of contract or you can file an ordinary civil action for specific performance or for damages. But Never or not the proper remedy is your mandamus. So we are done with definitions and distinctions as well as requisites. We go now to when petition is proper. So we start with certiorari. So for your certiorari, ano ang sinasabi ng batas that it must be a verified petition. Basis is section 1, rule 65. A person aggrieved thereby may file a verified petition in the proper court. Together with your verified petition is the certified true copy of the judgment order or resolution subject thereof. There must be also copies of all the pleadings and documents relevant and pertinent thereto. And last is there must be a sworn certification of non-forum shopping. So this is according to your second paragraph of Section 1, Rule 65. As early as now, let's relate it to Section 3, Rule 46. Ano ba yung Section 3, Rule 46? That is your material dates rule. So in actions filed under Rule 65, the petition shall further indicate the material dates showing number one is kailan mo natanggap ang judgment, final order, or resolution. When notice of the judgment or final order or resolution subject thereof was received. Number two is if you filed your motion for new trial or reconsideration, kailan mo ito finile. So, when a motion for new trial or reconsideration, if any, was filed, and last is, if your motion for new trial or reconsideration was denied, kailan mo natanggap ang decision. So, when notice of the denial thereof was received. So, take note of this material dates rule. Take note that your petition for certiorari is an extra ordinary remedy. That is an extraordinary remedy. The scope of review is narrow, limited only to errors of jurisdiction. So again, your petition for certiorari will resolve only errors of jurisdiction and not errors of judgment. So ano ba yung error of judgment? Your error of judgment, take note that is it it is one which the court may commit in the exercise of its jurisdiction. And it involves a court's appreciation of the facts and conclusions of law drawn from such facts. So if the court is acting within its jurisdiction, even if there are alleged errors committed in the exercise of its disc discretion, still it will amount to nothing more than mere errors of judgment. And if there is an error of judgment, what is your remedy? The remedy is to file an appeal. How about if it is an error of jurisdiction? Pag error of jurisdiction, what is the result or what is the effect if there is an error of jurisdiction? It will render an order or judgment void or voidable. And again, what are your grounds in your error of jurisdiction? The acts or acts complained of were done without jurisdiction or it was in excess of jurisdiction or with grave abuse of discretion. And what is your remedy if there is an error of jurisdiction? The remedy is certiorari.
When can you say that the respondent acted without jurisdiction? What is the meaning of that? It denotes that the tribunal, board, or officer acted with absolute lack of authority. How about excess of jurisdiction? When can you say that he is acting or acted in excess of jurisdiction? When the public respondent exceeds its power or acts without any statutory authority, and last is your grave abuse of discretion, it connotes such capricious and whimsical exercise of judgment as to be equivalent to lack or excess of jurisdiction. So, in other words, the power here is exercised in an arbitrary or despotic manner by reason of passion, prejudice, or personal hostility, or it was the exercise is so patent or so gross as to amount to an evasion of a positive duty. What is the true function of the writ? The true function of the writ is you want to keep an inferior court within the bounds of its jurisdiction or you want to prevent the, the inferior court from committing such a grave abuse of discretion amounting to excess of, of jurisdiction. And the abuse of discretion must be so grave and patent to justify the issuance of the writ. So again, even if the, even if the findings of the court as are incorrect, as long as it has jurisdiction over the case, then such correction is normally beyond the province of the certiorari. So we'll go now to jurisprudence. So if you're going to file your petition for certiorari, Take note that the mere allegation of grave abuse of discretion does not mean that your petition will automatically be given due course because your general invocation of grave abuse of discretion is insufficient. The parties must satisfy other exacting requirements under the rules, under the rules of court. Next. Ano ang sinabi natin? Our common denominator is there is no appeal or any plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. So, if appeal is available, then what is the effect? The remedy of certiorari will not lie. You cannot resort to certiorari if appeal is available. But is this rule absolute? Answer, no. Because there are exceptions. Pwede ka pa ring mag-file ng certiorari kahit merong appeal. When is this possible? If you can show to the court that instead of filing an appeal, you will file a certiorari because appeal is inadequate, is slow, insufficient, and will not promptly relieve a party from the injurious effects of the orders complained of the order complained of, then you can file a certiorari instead of appeal. Again, the availability of the ordinary recourse of appeal does not constitute sufficient ground to prevent a party from making use of the extraordinary remedy of certiorari if you can prove to the court that the certiorari is the remedy which is beneficial, speedy, and sufficient. So take note of this, ha? Huh? To emphasize what we have just discussed, let's read this 2006 bar exam question. So the question is, may the aggrieved party file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65 instead of Rule 45 for the nullification of a decision of the Court of Appeals in the exercise either of its original or appellate jurisdiction? Answer, pwede. Yes, pwede yan. Again, what did we say? Well, ordinarily, if appeal is available, then you must file an appeal. The remedy of certiorari will not lie. However, however, take note, the availability of the ordinary recourse of appeal is not a sufficient ground to prevent a party from making use of the extraordinary remedy of certiorari. Bakit? Because if a party can show to the court that even if appeal is available but appeal is inadequate, 
is low, insufficient, or will not promptly relieve the party from the injurious effects of the order complained of, then you can file, instead of filing an appeal, then you can file a petition for certiorari. So this is also the answer of the UP Law Center. Let's read the answer of the UP Law Center. Sabi dyan, the remedy to nullify a decision of the CA is a petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45 instead of Rule 65. But except in certain exceptional circumstances, such as where appeal is inadequate, then you can resort to Rule 65. By settled jurisprudence, certiorari is not a substitute for a lost appeal. So please take note of this. Another bar exam question which is related sa ating pinag-uusapan, this was asked in 2002. The defendant here was declared in default in the RTC. The reason is he failed to file an answer to a complaint for a sum of money. So on the basis of the plaintiff's ex parte presentation of evidence, what happened? Judgment by default was rendered against the defendant. So the default judgment was served on the defendant on October 1, October on October 10, he filed a verified motion to lift the order of default and to set aside the judgment. So in his verified motion to lift the order of default, he, the defendant rather, alleged that immediately upon the receipt of the summon, he saw the plaintiff, he confronted the plaintiff with his receipt evidencing his payment and that the plaintiff assured him that he would instruct his lawyer to withdraw the complaint. The trial court, however, denied the defendant's motion because it was not accompanied by an affidavit of merit. So what did the defendant do? The defendant filed a special civil action for certiorari that is under Rule 65 challenging the denial order. So question, is certiorari under Rule 65 the proper remedy? Another question, did the trial court abuse its discretion or act without or in excess of its jurisdiction in denying the defendant's motion to lift the order of default judgment. Before we answer the question, let's read first Rule 9. Bakit Rule 9? Because our question is a combination of Rule 9 and Rule 65. Para mas lalo nyong maintindihan kung bakit naging ganon ang sagot ng UP Law Center, let's Read Rule 9, the effect of failure to plead. So when can you be declared in default under Section 3 if the defending party fails to answer within the time allowed? Therefore, the court shall declare the defending party in default. What are the requisites? There must be motion first of the claiming party. There must be notice to the defending party and there must be proof of such failure. What happens next? Thereupon, the court shall proceed to render judgment, granting the claimant such relief as his or her pleading may warrant. What is the effect if you are considered in default? You, are, you will not be entitled to take part in the trial, but you will be entitled only to notices of subsequent proceedings. What is your relief if you are a party declared in default? What will you do? You should file a motion under oath to set aside the order of default. But you have to show to the court that your failure to file an answer is because was due to fame. Ano ba yung fame? That is your fraud, accident, mistake, or excusable negligence. And, importante yung end ha, and that you have a meritorious defense. You do this at any time after notice but before judgment. So paano ba yan ginagawa? How do you do that? Simply lang, you execute an affidavit of merit just like in a, in this um, picture or in this slide. And ano ang isusulat mo dyan? You state there the reason why you were not able to file an answer within the reglementary period. So in our example, ang sinulat niya dyan is the reason why he was not able to file an answer is because he was admitted in the hospital. And since he is the counsel rather, is a solo practitioner, then he has no available personnel to effect the filing of the of the said answer. So that's, that is how you do an affidavit of merit. Next, 
what is the extent of relief to be awarded? You take note of this kasi ito ang nagpapaseparate for from regular judgment. Your default judgment, from your regular judgment, ano ba ang nangyayari sa default judgment? The court or the um, the court or the judge cannot issue a judgment that exceeds the amount or is different in kind from that prayed for nor it can award unliquidated damages again kung ang prayer mo sa iyong complaint is you will be awarded the amount of 100,000 then si court or si judge cannot award 150,000 because that exceeds the amount or the the judgment cannot be different in kind from that prayed for in your complaint neither it can award unliquidated damages so that is the concept of rule 9 so with that in mind let's answer now our question is certiorari under rule 65 the proper remedy answer yes it is the proper remedy bakit a eh, disposal naman yan ng entire case so therefore dapat appeal ang remedy or petition for relief but bakit Rule 65. Again, ano ang sinabi natin? Even if appeal is available, if you can show to the court that appeal is inadequate, is low, insufficient, or will not promptly relieve of a party from the injurious effects of the order complained of, then you can file a petition for certiorari instead of an appeal. Bakit mo masasabi na the appeal will not promptly relieve a party from the injurious effects of the order complained of. Take note that um, take note that if you are a party declared in default, what is the effect? You have no participation in the trial. You cannot participate in the trial by standard ka lang dyan. You are entitled only to the notices of subsequent proceedings. At pag yan ang nangyari, hindi ka, pa na, hindi ka nakapagpresenta ng evidence mo in the trial court at pag yan ay umakyat sa higher court, like for the, uh, in the CA for example, then the CA will review only the case based on the records. And ang records ng case is containing only the evidence or the documents presented by the plaintiff. Walang documents doon or walang evidence the of the defendant. So therefore, the evidence there is self-serving evidence presented by the plaintiff in the ex parte reception. So it is not therefore a speedy and adequate remedy if you are going to file an appeal. Therefore, certiorari is the proper remedy in that case or in the case of default judgment. Again, you can resort immediately to certiorari in a default judgment because first, your, ch your challenge is on the nullity of both the order of default and the judgment of default. Especially kung merong writ of execution na na-issue na si court, then appeal is not really your speedy and adequate remedy. So to answer our question, is certiorari under Rule 65 the proper remedy? Sagot ng UP Law Center, the petition for certiorari under Rule 65 filed by the defendant is the proper remedy because again, appeal is not a plain, speedy, and adequate remedy in the ordinary course of law. In appeal, the, def the defendant in default can only question the decision in the light of the evidence of the plaintiff. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Pag ikaw ay na a judge ng in default, only the evidence of the plaintiff is um, presented. You cannot present your evidence. And the defendant, therefore, here cannot invoke the receipt na siya ay bayad na. Or he cannot invoke the receipt to prove payment of his obligation to the plaintiff. And uh, question number two, did the trial court abuse its discretion or act without or in excess of its jurisdiction in denying the defendant's motion to lift the order of default judgment? Answer, yes. Ano ulit ang ating definition ng grave abuse of discretion? It connotes capricious and whimsical exercise of judgment. Or in other words, 
the power was exercised in an arbitrary or despotic manner by reason of passion, prejudice, or personal hostility. So in our case, bakit mo siya nasabing he gravely abused its discretion? Because here, from what can you see in the facts, defendant filed a motion the defendant here, here filed a verified motion to lift the order of default and to set aside the judgment. And in that verified motion, he already alleged the fact that he saw the plaintiff, he confronted the plaintiff, then there is a receipt evidencing his payment and the plaintiff assured that he would instruct his lawyer to withdraw the complaint. But ang basis ni judge in denying the motion is only because it was not accompanied by an affidavit of merit. But if you want to lax the procedure, pwede na yung final niya na verified motion. Since the good defense of the defendant was already incorporated in the verified motion, there was no need for a separate affidavit of merit. So this is the answer of the UP Law Center. Please be guided accordingly. Another established rule is that certiorari is not a substitute for a lost appeal. So again, what is the general rule? If your period for appeal has lapsed dahil ikaw ay nagpabaya, then certiorari is not available. But are there exceptions? Meron. Again, what are the exceptions when public welfare and advancement of public policy dictates or when the broader interest of justice so requires, when the writs issued are null and void, when the questioned order amounts to an oppressive exercise of judicial authority, or when for persuasive reasons the rules may be relaxed to relieve a litigant of an injustice not commensurate with his failure to comply with the prescribed procedure or in other meritorious cases, then you can file a certiorari even if the period for appeal has lapsed. Let's read this statement. The remedies of appeal and certiorari are mutually exclusive, not alternative or successive. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin yan? Palagi nyo yan nababasa sa mga libro or sa memory aid. So again, what did we say? Appeal and certiorari are two different remedies that is available to your litigant. But take note that appeal and certiorari are generally not interchangeable. Ano ang sinabi natin? Certiorari is not and cannot be a substitute for an appeal. Bakit? Because again, if you are going to file your petition for certiorari, ano ang sinasabi dyan na common denominator natin, there must be no appeal or there must be no plain, speedy, and adequate remedy. So if appeal is available, even if you will cite there that there is a grave abuse of discretion, still certiorari will not prosper. But is this rule absolute? Answer, no. Merong exceptions. The general rule that an appeal and a certiorari are not interchangeable admits exceptions. And the exceptions are, number one, when public welfare and advancement of public policy dictates, when the broader interest of justice so requires, when the writs issued are null and void, or when the questioned order amounts to an oppressive exercise of judicial authority. So para mas lalo nating maintindihan, let's take a look at this case. This is, um, the citation rather is GR number 194 214. What happened here? Nag-file si petitioner ng petition for certiorari instead of an appeal at ang sabi niya is itreat nyo na lang yung petition for certiorari ko as an appeal. Siyempre, mabilis na nag-object si respondent. Sabi ni respondent, hindi yan pwede. Bawal yan. That is a wrong mode of appeal dahil magkaiba si rule, for, rule 65 and appeal. Therefore, court should dismiss the petition. But ano ang sinabi ng Supreme Court? Sabi ng Supreme Court, we can relax the rules or we can apply the liberality of the rules. The court exercised liberality, liberality and considered the petition for certiorari filed therein as an appeal. In the case of Dex versus Kuwanan, the petition for review was 
uh, the petition for certiorari was filed instead of a petition for review, but it was filed within the reglementary period. So such move would be in accordance with the liberal spirit pervading the rules of court and in the interest of substantial justice. So this is the remedies or this is how you explain if you will be asked to explain the concept of remedies of appeal and certiorari are mutually exclusive. Let's relate our discussion to Rule 41, Section 1. Ano ang sinasabi dyan? An appeal may be taken from a judgment or final order that completely disposes of the case or of a particular matter when declared by these rules to be appealable. Therefore, no appeal may be taken from the following first is an order denying a petition for relief or any similar motion seeking relief from judgment, an interlocutory order, an order disallowing or dismissing an appeal, an order denying a motion to set aside a judgment by consent, confession, compromise on the ground of fraud, mistake, or duress, or any ground vitiating consent, an order of execution, a judgment or final order, or against one or more or several parties or in separate claims, counterclaims, cross-claims, and third-party complaints while the main case is pending, unless the court allows an appeal. And last is an order dismissing an action without prejudice. So kung hindi ka pwede dito mag-appeal, so what is your remedy? According to Section 1, Rule 41, in any of the foregoing circumstances, the aggrieved party may file an appropriate special civil action as provided in Rule 65. You take note of this kasi ito malimit na tinatanong sa bar exams, especially your letter B, that is your interlocutory order, and your letter G, the order dismissing an action without prejudice. Kung sinabi ni Rule 41, Section 1, that for your interlocutory orders, the proper remedy is to file an appropriate special civil action as provided in Rule 65, take note that in small claims cases, very clear under Section 14 that your petition for certiorari, mandamus, or prohibition against any interlocutory order issued by the court is a prohibited pleading. That is a prohibited pleading. But, you have to relate that also that if the in small claims cases, kung meron ng judgment, the decision shall be final, executory, and unappealable. So in that case, if the decision is final, executory, and unappealable, what is your remedy? Your remedy is Rule 65. How about in writ of amparo? In writ of amparo, your petition for certiorari, mandamus, or prohibition against any interlocutory order is again a prohibited pleading. So, hindi ka pwedeng mag-rule 65 dyan. That is under your section 11. In your summary procedure, is still the same. Prohibited pleading ang pagfa-file ng petition for certiorari, mandamus, or prohibition against any interlocutory order issued by the court. This is also true when you go to the writ of habeas data that is according to section 13. And your special alternative dispute resolution rules or your ADR, take note that if you are a party to an arbitration, you are precluded from filing an appeal or from filing a petition for certiorari questioning the merits of an arbitral award. So let's just sum up what we have been discussing. There is this 2006 bar exam question, explain the mode of certiorari as a special civil action from the RTC or the CA to the Supreme Court. Again, ano ang sinabi ko if you will be confronted with this question, just remember that it is a special civil action who it is directed to at ano ang scope or what function is he exercising and the grounds and of course our common denominator. So that is how you answer this question.
Another bar exam question, which was asked in 2006, explained each mode of certiorari as a mode of review from the decisions of the NLRC. So if it is from the NLRC, according to the St. Martin's Funeral Homes, the mode of review of the decision of the NLRC is through Rule 65. It is a special civil action, but again, you will not file it in the Supreme Court. You file it in the Court of Appeals pursuant to the doctrine of hierarchy of courts. Down to our last slide, kailangan ko nang putulin yung ating discussion because masyado nang mahaba, baka umabot ng one hour, aantukin na kayo. So, this is a 2013 bar question number 20 MCQ. The labor arbiter ruling on a purely legal question, he ordered a worker's reinstatement and this ruling was affirmed on appeal by the NLRC. And under the labor code, the, NLR, the NLRC's decision is final. So the company's recourse under the circumstances is to blank. Choices are letter A, you can file a motion for reconsideration. And if it is denied, you file a petition for review with the Court of Appeals on the pure legal question the case presents. Letter B, you can file a motion for reconsideration again, and if it is denied, you appeal that to the Secretary of Labor since labor policy issue is involved, or you can file a motion for reconsideration, and if denied, you file a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals on the ground of grave abuse of discretion by the NLRC. Letter D is file a motion for reconsideration, and if denied, you can file a petition for review on certiorari with the Supreme Court since a pure question of law is involved. And letter E is you can directly file a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals since a motion for reconsideration would serve no purpose when a pure question of law is involved. So before I give you the answer, let me just thank again all of you who are watching my videos or who are subscribe or who subscribe subscribe to my channel and I am so sorry if hindi ako agad nakakapag-upload actually marami na akong mga videos na na-record but I have to redo it again kasi may may pagkamaingay ang audio maririnig mo yung ingay ng manok ng ng mga aso so if you have any recommendation if you know of a microphone that mas maganda sa noise cancellation, please leave a comment. What I am using right now is a Blue Yeti microphone. So, again, thank you. Daghang salamat. So, our answer to this question is, ano ulit ang sinabi natin? From NLRC, you go to the Court of Appeals because you are going to observe the doctrine of hierarchy of courts. And what you will be using is a petition for certiorari that is under Rule 65 and your ground is grave abuse of discretion. The answer, therefore, is letter C. But take note ha, that you have to file first a motion for reconsideration. And only after the denial of the motion for reconsideration, then you can file your Rule 65 in the Court of Appeals. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.